Praise the Lord. Praise God. Father, we worship you. Father, we worship you. Can we just lift up our two hands towards heaven? Just in, in the worship. Let the river flow. The river of the Spirit. The river of the Spirit. Let the river flow. The river of the Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Jesus said to Martha, 
He said, one thing is needful. He said, Mary has chosen that. Sometimes we're worried. We're overwhelmed. But what we should not worry about. And like the woman at the well, was I seeking for things that do not satisfy? My Savior.
He must increase and I must decrease. That's our prayer today. We are right here in the prayers of the living God. And he must increase. And all of us encounters of the spirit. Grant us encounters. Somebody touch me. Somebody touch me. Just follow my lead. Sing, but follow my lead. Somebody touched my soul oh. when I was praying. That's what you need a fresh touch. Not religion, not another Sunday service. Somebody touched me. Somebody touched me. Somebody touched my soul. Oh, when I was praying, praying to my. to sing songs of consecration songs of consecration it's great to sing about how great God is how wonderful he is but we must learn to sing songs of our devotion to Christ and say Lord I'm yours and say Lord everything I am belongs to you and that is worship when we can not just worship his person we can fully yield ourselves to him we can fully yield ourselves church is more than a beautiful note and beautiful dress church is that place where you have a genuine encounter with the lord many go somewhere on sundays but few come back with encounters and that's why there's no conviction because encounters is a place where convictions are built. And if you're finding worship boring, know that something has gone wrong with your spirit. If you're finding the presence of God time wasting, know that something has gone wrong with your spirit. As we come together like this, there's a lot the Lord wants to do in our lives. From cleansing to teaching to empowering us another week is ahead of us we've come here Father we worship you thank you Lord for your love and your mercy and I will come and
If you find, if you struggle to let it go, tell the Lord, help me, help me. that the assurance of the spirit of God will fill your spirit and soul I pray for grace to make adjustments I pray for grace to make adjustments I pray that the loudest voice in your life will be the voice of God I pray the loudest voice in your life will be the voice of God that whatever is distracting you the spirit of God will remove and you'll find yourself yielding more to God and yielding more to God and you did more to God. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, the beauty of the multiple service is that each service just has its own, it has its own uh, feel. Sorry, excuse me.
Yeah, he accepts it as his own fuel. Praise God. Please, if you have a seat next to you, we've run out of seats. Just let the ushers know because of all the people standing at the back and I guess maybe there's no space in the overflow again. Hallelujah. Whoa. I didn't know about you, but I didn't want to stop. You know, I just felt that that's it. Praise God. Well, um, <clears throat> just before I start teaching, I want to recognize he was with us in the second service and he's also with us in the third service. Um, he's, a, he's a friend and a brother in the person of, but he's not alone now, Banki and Adesua Wellington. Would you please, yeah? Thank you so much for coming. Banki, Banki Wellington is an incredible, accomplished musician filmmaker, writer, speaker. I'm not in my best <laughs> talking position. Please forgive me. Businessman, politician, philanthropist. He's also an assistant pastor at the Waterbrook Church and co-director of the Lekki Food Bank charity. Of course, his wife and this way are with him and they are blessed with um, their son, uh, Haziah. Haziah. Not I, it's Haziah. It's Haziah. Olushego, well into I've never even seen that name in the scripture before. It's just once in the scripture. Maybe that's why. Maybe I, and when you say it, you could pronounce it as E. It's, you know, it's normally H E. The scripture was that over H E. Yeah. So Bank is running for the um, office of the Federal House of Representatives. It's here, sir, on that day. People's Democratic Party. Thank you. And like we always say, may God grant you your heart desire. In Jesus' name. Thank you for coming. Amen. <clears throat> Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. We've had quite a number of visitors in recent times, you know, and maybe we're going to have some more. Hallelujah. I hope you've gotten your PVC. Yes. Okay, good. So that's a good step to go. Hallelujah. So that's a good step to go. All right. Um, let's go into the word of God quickly. Yeah, let's go into the word of God quickly. Well, we should just have like Sundays where we just worship all through and no and no sermon. You know. You know, but thank God wine press is here. Wine press is oh wow. <laughs> what will it be on Wednesday? How many of you have invited your five friends to wine press? You've invited your five friends. Wave your hands. Let me see. Let me see those that have not wave your hands. Let me see those that have not invited their friends. Oh wow, look at all of you have not invited your friends to wine press. Oh wow. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> amen. 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 We had a, you know, my press is going to be very powerful. What is it holding here, right? It's holding a landmark. And the reason why is, of course, um, all the services in the first service have been full. The fourth service also been full. So we really don't have a service to hold everybody together. So landmark, we'll have a landmark. And also we're holding all the other 12 centers. It's also hold this simultaneous broadcast. And um, we have Nathan Abbasi and Dusi also joining us in worship. So you want to come and experience that powerful ministry. And it's, I mean, it's just been powerful. It's just been powerful. Hallelujah. Wow. I'm just trying to pull it together. Glory to God. All right. Let's turn our Bibles to John chapter 5 verse 19. And I'm talking about becoming spirit dependent. I'm trusting the Holy Spirit to make it fast. So I can say all I said in larger time in shorter time becoming spirit dependent john chapter 5 verse 19 if there's someone's life you want to learn from it will be if there's if i'm given the opportunity to learn from one person's life and they say just choose one person's life i tell you i'm going to choose jesus christ because he is the perfect man and leader the Bible says, this is what it said, looking not to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And so when I read the Bible, someone says, someone says, why do you believe in Jesus? It's, it's funny because someone says, I said, the Bible says, I don't believe the Bible. I said, just think about it this way. Even if you don't believe in the Bible, a man came and changed the whole course of calendar history. That man can't be man. That man is God. 
If you don't even believe that, and, and the fact that Jesus Christ rose from the dead is not a biblical fact, it's an historical record. It's an historical record that Jesus rose from the dead. You know, <laughs> I was teasing with Alibaba just some days ago, and he, you know, what, what did he say? He, he said something very funny. I'm trying to, let me find what he said. I hope I can find it. He said something very funny. <laughs> And I came at it. Oh wow. Lord help me find this. You know. Oh, can I find this? Please come back. Come back here. Oh, I can't find it. Yeah. So this is what he said. He said that, because this is what people read the Bible, just because how to remember. He said, the distance between um, Egypt and Israel is about a thousand kilometers. Now, how come it took Israel 40 years to get there? You know, uh, you know, that these are the things, I mean, someone just kind of like, you know, like, you saying both will have done it in maybe five days, something, you know, something like that. It was just like a joke. It was not a CV, but it was quoting someone. And I said that, um, it's good that people say that because what they do is that they read half portion of the Bible. And not the whole thing. I said, although Azor took 40 years, you forgot that sometimes they were on the same spot for 10 years. They were on the same spot for 20 years. They were on the same spot for a long time. So it's not as if they were joining every day. Why am I saying that? We live in a generation that is scripture in, that, that, on the, that knows the book literally. So if you're going to talk to them, you must also investigate the book. The days of saying, the Bible said, to slam on someone's face, they are over. So we need a generation of believers that have thought God's word and can intelligently involve in conversation. Just like when Daddy Free said, you know, if people are really speaking in tongues, they should be speaking Yoruba, French, you know. Have you heard that theory before? I, I said, that's very true, but the confusion is this. If, if, if you're meant to be speaking Yoruba, French, and this, 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 why did God give us the gift of interpretation? Simple because we can just tell Google, Google translates. And Google translates. But because the, the answer is right in the Bible, the answer is what? Right in the Bible. Someone said to me one time, he said, when the children of Israel crossed the river Jordan, that history, that the Red Sea was not that deep, that was just an inch deep. So they just literally walked past the Red Sea. That there was not really like a miracle. <laughs> and I said, so Powerful. He said, why is it powerful? Because God drowned the Egyptians and their chariots in what? An inch deep river. It's a big miracle, praise God. There's no way you're going, it's going to be a miracle. There's no way you take it, it's going to be a miracle. But what it takes is this. This, this is what it takes. We have a generation of people that come to church, but we need a generation of people that really are given to Bible study. And that's why you must listen to the intelligent. It's great to go to any church and Wonderful. It's not great to go to any church, I'll be honest. You know, it's not. It's not. Yeah, because sometimes I hear people on television, I'm like, oh, wow, what's this guy saying? Because nothing. I'm like, why are you on social media? Nothing. So you must to learn and take notes and go back and check and say, does this make sense or does this not make sense? And check for yourself. You know, and that, that way we can engage. You know, sometimes you say, God will judge you. You can use God. I mean, when that is spoke about tight and someone says that, God will judge you, go to hell. All those kind of things don't work. It's a, someone presents an intelligent conversation. You must present what? An intelligent conversation. But the reason why people don't do that is that a lot of people have never schooled in the word. They've not questioned what they believe. Yeah, because someone says that, how can you say God made heaven and earth in seven days? Doesn't make sense. Science says the world dated back to the ageless past. And I said, I agree with you. I said, what do you mean? <laughs> I said, when Bible says God made the heaven and earth in seven days, the question is that what seven days? Are they human seven days or another seven days? The reason why is that it was on the third day that God made heaven, day and night. What was used to count it before? What was he using to count it before? Because it made day and night the third day, but he had said the evening and the morning, the evening and the morning, the evening and the morning. So, so what was he used to count it before? Glory to God. John chapter 5. 
So I'm challenging you, you know, because some of you just come on Sunday, you're just okay with a great message. You need to find time going to the Bible and just check for yourself and check for yourself and check for yourself. And thank God that in February, our, our whole church is doing a discipleship course. It's called Foundations. Foundations course. Eight, is it six or eight weeks? Yeah. Yes. Midweek service is totally, totally foundation. Yeah. So we'll do praise and worship and just break and we'll just do class. You know, praise the Lord. Once we're able to sort out our, our movement, you know that I've given you a heads up that we're going to renovate for about six weeks. So we're going to be out of it for six weeks. Then come back because it's going to be bigger and better. So come back and all of those. Amen. John chapter 5 verse 19. Becoming spirit dependent. Jesus said one of the most amazing words he would ever say. And this is what he said. And Jesus answered. What did Jesus say? Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the son can do nothing of himself but what he seeth the father do for what things soever he doeth this also doeth the son likewise this touched me a lot so jesus was saying that if i want to heal the sick and i don't see the father heal the sick then i can heal the sick i'm like i'm blown away because i'm like if there's anybody that can do anything by himself it should be jesus then Jesus says, hey, this is the secret of my life. That I don't take a step until heaven clears me. Yeah. I'm like, this is awesome. That means if Jesus is a businessman, before he engages in anything, he will say, hold it, let's check the records. If Jesus was a single person, before he dates that girl or dates this guy, he will say, I find you attractive, but that's not where we start from. Where we start from is this in line with heaven's command and this is very powerful because this is not the way we live our life as christian the way the way the modern christian live is the fact that oh this sounds nice this sounds intelligent let's do this but that's not the bible way jesus says that whatsoever i don't see the father do i, I don't do what i do is what i see the father do this 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 makes sense to me no wonder when lazarus was sick and they say come your friend is sick he couldn't go because the father had not released him yet and everybody thought he was wicked and listen as a christian you need to do things sometimes you do things that people misunderstand you and you must be okay with it because people are like where's jesus where's jesus where's your martha mary were going crazy but jesus couldn't walk on emotions he stayed back and when he finally got the approval he went there and mary and martha said you came too late he said no the one that sends me sends me on time he says and i came right on time and what they thought was over became the biggest miracle the question you want to ask yourself is this and this is about being spirit dependent are you a spirit dependent christian or are you a mental dependent christian how what lengths do you use to make your decision do you depend on yourself they, they are need dependent christian they are money dependent christians they are connection dependent christian which one are you are you spirit dependent because jesus christ said he said that whatsoever i does and i don't see my father do and the father is the spirit so someone says oh you know pastor i'm traveling abroad i say is that what god wants to do pastor i got the approval you must remember that not all visas are God's visas. Because not all open doors are God's open doors. Open doors are pure distraction from Satan. So because, you know, sometimes you, you come across a single lady and say, Hey, you know, what about this guy you dating? The pastor is so nice. You know, like, <laughs> you know, he's a pastor, like, you're like, he's doing so well. I'm like, yeah, he's a good, like, yeah, he's a good of God. <laughs> pastor just the range of pastors in the Koyi has a job. I cannot be the will of God. What else will be the will of God? glory to god but jesus christ said what the only thing i do is what i see the father do see how moses says in an experience exodus chapter 33 exodus chapter 33 exodus chapter 33 verse 14 god told moses my presence will go with you and i will give you rest what did moses is verse 15 moses said if that presence go not with us carry us not from here moses said if for any reason your presence will not go with us don't go from here question have you asked yourself lord this project i'm in is your presence with me 
Have you asked yourself, this relationship I'm in, is your presence with me? Have you asked yourself, this change I'm making, is your presence with me? He says, if you would not go with us. What? The question is, that, what did Moses know? That Moses, they were slaves. They said, we would rather jeopardize our freedom than to have freedom with our presence. That is, that is overwhelming. That is an overwhelming thought that we would rather jeopardize freedom than to have freedom with our presence. It's almost like saying we would rather remain where we are except we have presence. And the thing is that, so why don't Christians value presence? The reason why they're extreme, because when we got born again, we had this extreme of people that were so behaved in nasty ways because of what God said. He said, God said very spooky things. So we had another generation of Christians that moved to the extreme that says we don't have to listen to all the spookiness. Let's just, because we had this spooky generation that would drink kerosene and say, God said. So we moved to another generation that says, we don't have to even say God said. Let's just do what we want. Let's make use of our sins. And you can use your sins. But the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean it not. See what it says. It is a don't use it. He only said what? Don't lean. Don't lean means don't put all your life weight on your understanding. So, that's where the Holy Ghost comes in. So the Holy Ghost becomes the person that begins that we have to lean on in the Holy Spirit. What does the Holy Spirit look like? Let me give you a definition. Spiritual dependency is relying and prioritizing the partnership with the Holy Spirit in our lives. That's what it means. It's, it's, it's relying. So, I want to do this. I'm relying on this. I'm, I'm prioritizing. Prioritizing means that what he says counts. That's prioritizing. What he says counts. So, I'm relying... I, I see the strategy shit, but I'm not just making my decision based on the strategy shit. I'm relying on what the spirit. I, I'm prioritizing the opinion of the spirit. My mother likes her. My, my uncle likes her. My pastor likes her. But what is the spirit saying? It's amazing because even when they would choose an apostle, a, a son to replace Judas Iscariot. You know what they did? The Bible said they fasted and prayed just to choose an apostle. There was a lot of prayer to choose an apostle. Because the truth is that you cannot be dependent on God and not be prayerful. Nothing shows humility like prayer. Hum prayer is a function. Because when you pray, all you're saying is that I can't do it myself. I can't help myself. I can't fix it. This is why we're praying. When you don't pray, all you say is that I, I, I got this. And so this is what we do. Give me a walking stick. So this is, what we, this is what we call spiritual dependence. We, we, we bring the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I'm, I'm spiritually dependent. This is because this helps you. I'm spiritually dependent. See, this kind of dependence is not dependence. It's, it's like, it's fashionable. I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm spiritually dependent. I'm spiritually dependent. Uh, you know, it, because I can use it from time to time. It's even like, nice. so what, what you do is that, <laughs> you know, um, hallelujah, hallelujah. I speak in tongues. I'm spiritually dependent. You, you go for, for meetings. I say, Father, guide us today. Meanwhile, you know what you want to do. That's, that's what we call spiritual dependence. It's a guide us. No, no, no. You knew what you were going to do. There's nothing guiding you. You came with your own agenda. All we want God to do is like ketchup. Just put ketchup on it. Lord, I've made the fries. Put ketchup on it. It doesn't matter if you like it or not. Just put ketchup on it. How do you want to raise your children? You know, you know that they are going to go to, to school. Your friend is going to, even though yeah, God has another plan for them because it, it, I mean, it's just what you want. So, you know, something you, you say, well, I prayed about it. You prayed about it. Just to let us know. I prayed about it. That's what he just, I prayed about it. That's not dependence. This is, see, I hope this is a walking stick, but this is not a walking stick. I'm not depending on this. This is a fashion symbol. This is something it can help support me from time to time. But I'm not dependent on this. Let me show what I'm dependent on. If you ever see people using this, they are dependent on it. Without the stick, they can't go anywhere. 
If the stick break, they're broken. If the stick is stuck, they're stuck. They don't have anything they want to do. They are dependent on the stick. When you say man is spirit dependent, this is what it means. Holy Ghost, my weight is on you. Carry me. This is what it means. Holy Ghost, my weight is on you. Carry me. I can't go anywhere. I, it's not as if I can walk by myself. Holy Ghost, my weight is on you. Carry me. Holy Ghost, my weight is on you. Carry me. Holy Ghost, my weight is on you. Carry me. The question is that where is your weight? Is it on your intelligence, on your connection, on your money, on your beauty, on your CV, or your weight is on the spirit? Becoming a spirit dependent man. Jesus Christ, our Savior, said this. What did he say? He said, except I see what he does, I can do anything. It's, ama it's amazing how we've forgotten that the strength of the Christian life is the presence of the Holy Spirit. And it's time for us to go back to it and become spirit dependent. It's amazing that we will choose to date without praying. It's amazing that we will choose to make major decisions without praying. We are raising children without praying. Even your children's name. Didn't you see how they took names in the Bible? That sometimes names were the function of angelic visitations. I cannot do without you. I cannot do without you. I cannot do. Can you compare that to this? This is what this is our own spiritual dependence. It shows up as cliche. Keep singing. It's it's a cliche thing. <laughs> you know, I prayed about it. It's a, it's a cliche. It's a cliche thing. You know, hi. You know, it's a cliche. It's nice. It fits the dressing. It's cliche. This is what Christians do. They say God said. This is what Christians say. They they speak two three tongues. Ka -ba 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 -ba. You know that kind of thing. Uh, no 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 no. That's not you depend on God. You put your whole weight on Him. Praise God. I said, praise God. Someone says, so, someone says, why do you put your weight on God? Why is it important to be spiritually, spiritually dependent? <laughs> and, and there's a lot of things I can tell you, but one of the key things I can tell you is this. is because spiritual, in, spiritual dependence brings about spiritual intelligence. And what am I spiritual, <laughs> brings about spiritual intelligence? There's emotional intelligence where you're very good with emotions. There's financial intelligence where you're good with finances. But spiritual intelligence something entirely different when you begin to have information through the person of the holy spirit you know you know someone says that why are you guys fasting for 21 days you're going for wine press wednesday thursday friday saturday sunday is that not too much you don't understand what do we know what do we have the one we have but we'll stay with him some of you have big son names. <laughs> oh my God. You are connected. <laughs> you have big son names. You have opportunity. But some of us, if God doesn't come through, we will be stuck. I remember when I was young, my mom would want me because I had, we had this family friends that they were very, very rich. And we will play some dangerous play. And my mom would say, if something happens to them, they will fly them abroad. He said, you, if you break your leg, you know, Bobby, you will stay here and go to hospitals locally. What does that mean? Look behind before you jump. It's okay for some people not to pray because they don't need the prayers. They don't need the prayers. But they, either number one, the things they are doing is so small in their life, they don't need God's help. Or number two, they have support from other places. So, they have connections. They have huge surnames. But some of us, I I will lift up my eyes onto the hill. Where cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord. Ah, that's where he is. So, why be spiritually dependent? The reason why is that spiritual development brings about spiritual intelligence. How do I explain that to you? That maybe I should read the scripture, Second Kings chapter 6. And, and some of you that are not used to this can be like, what does that really mean? I understand the fact that you don't understand what it means, but it doesn't mean it's not true. And that's why you should open your mind and say, okay, I've not heard about spiritual intelligence before, so you're going to hear it right now. Spiritual intelligence is intelligence about life that comes directly from God. Second Kings chapter 6 and verse 8. 2 Kings chapter 6 in verse 8. 
and the Bible says this, there was a war between the king of Syria and Israel. The Bible says, and the king of Syria won warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, in such and such place shall be my camp. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, beware that you pass not such a place, for the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the palace, which the man of God told him, and warned him off. And because it took note of that intelligence, the Bible says he was saved he said himself once not once not twice so this became a pattern so just imagine just imagine this this prophet to be in his house and you always think that about countries that have satellites no this was a spiritual satellite and it could get information from the king without being there the king will be discussing his house and he'll be hearing it look at the next line the bible says this this is very powerful and the king of israel was the king of syria verse 11 was so troubled for this thing and he called his servants and said unto them will you not show me which of these for the king of israel and because he was confused how do we plan something and they know on the other side see this is why we go for wine press because there are things we need to know about february march april may june the beauty of foreknowledge is that we can anticipate and position ahead so we know that when the new government come there will be a focus of policy in this area and all of a sudden, we position there. So we have the first mover's advantage. And they wonder, how did he know that? Because we were given inside information. By who? By the Spirit. Glory to God. Oh, wow. Just imagine if General Electric just makes... I mean, some huge company just makes an announcement and says, we just got 20 plots on Providence. We're going to build a massive mall there on Providence to where our church street is. All the properties of the, of the street, what? Without building, they what? Rise up because of the announcement. God says, I can show you what is ahead so that you can carefully position yourself for victory. I, 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 I was sharing see let's finish with it before i jump and one of the servants said unto him verse 12 none of us is telling on the king he said boy elijah the prophet that is in israel it tells the king of israel the words which you speak in your chamber I, one of my friends you know was sharing that story with me about how we got mar how the marriage happened he said i was going for this wedding and the spirit of god told me be kind to people on the train and and that was it long and short they met on the train and they were in their best state because they had the word be kind maybe god has taken to where your husband is or where your wife is but you were not in your best state so they could not notice you in fact god prevented them from being there because if they saw you in that state they would refuse you in the future And some of you, the reason why God has put you in some place, because you don't understand. But if you could just have inside information that something will happen there and you begin to prepare yourself. I, I kept this story some years ago. We had, I'm not sure what we had, but I was sleeping at my house because I remember how it happened. And I thought that the guy that does money exchange for us had called me, but he didn't call me because I called him back and I said, you called me that dollar has changed and gone increase. I didn't call you. I said, no, you did. So, obviously, I did not dreamt or had a vision. But it was so real, I could not distinguish. You know, so I looked through my phone. I said, wow, okay, I know what it is. So, because in the dream, he had told me of vision. He had told me that dollar had gone by maybe 20 at that time. You know, I said, oh, wow. So, I knew God was trying to tell me something. So, I positioned and bought some dollars. Three months down the line, the dollar jumped from what I saw in my dream to reality. As people were crying, I was laughing. I said, they sweet me. But they pain them. Praise God. I said, they pain them. But they sweet me. But that's what, what God wants to do for you. you. You know, let me tell you what this looks like. This looks like, before you go for the proposal, God tells you, they will, give you, they will ask you three questions. These are the three questions. You go for the proposal, and they said, and, and the, the board, this is a very hot board. 
all of pa, 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 MIT trade, everybody, you know, 14 years is essential, this and this, 24 years here. So, sharp! So, they throw you questions. They said, yes, I knew we were going to ask that question. I prepared some slides for you. And they're like, how did you know that? You're like, I, I, I'm able to anticipate the needs of my customers. Hey. We're like, oh, really? And the second guy says, okay, well, we have another question about this. He said, yes, I also that. And he said, this is this. I'm like, who is this guy? And they don't realize that the intelligence of heaven is at work in you. That, that's, that's what we're believing for. Oh, glory to God. I said, glory to God. Just imagine. Just, just imagine. So powerful. The second reason, the second reason why I should be spirit dependent is this is for interventions. For what? Interventions. Everybody in life is going to have a situation where what you do or what you have is not enough to get you what you want. Everybody's life is going to have a situation where there will be a gap between what is required and what is the, what you can do. So sometimes you have a business idea, but there's no funding. Sometimes there is funding, there's no approval. Sometimes there's approval, there's no personnel. Sometimes there's a gap between, and there's a gap. And you will need some kind of intervention. Who knows what I'm talking about? Oh, that's so weak. Let me talk to those that are listening to me here. Who knows what I'm talking about? What you get, you need some kind of what? Someone said intervention. intervention. Sometimes it's the fact that you need someone to speak to someone else on your behalf. Judges chapter 5, verse 20. This is why spiritual dependence is powerful. This scripture, I love it. If you don't use it to pray, I feel bad for you. Tomorrow, NLP, make sure you are there as we pray for intervention. This week, NLP, we're praying for resources, we're praying for relationships. See what the Bible says. Judges 5.20. The Bible says, they fought from heaven. Question. How do they fight from heaven? It's a metaphor. That means that when it says heaven, not the physical space, from the unseen, because heaven can also mean unseen realm. The, what he was saying was this. A fire was moving in the office. And they were asking who helped. But it was not who. Because it was not a person. It was angelic activity that was moving the fire. Let me explain what I mean. The Bible says this. Kapato leke manasos. Hey. As Peter approached prison doors. Prison doors opened of their own accord. I thought automatic gates were in a generation. No sir. Angels have been opening gates since generation before. He says as he didn't touch them. As it got there. The prison doors would just open. They got down. The prison door would just open. It was a remote control function. They were opening the door from the spirit realm. Ha, yeah, yeah. Some of you need doors to be open from the spirit realm. I don't know if I'm talking to you. If I'm talking to you, shut I receive it. My God. Bible says they fought from heaven. R look at it again. Oh wow. Put it for me up for me, please. He said they fought from heaven. He said the stars, the, of course you know that sometimes the word stars refers to angels in the Bible. He said the stars in their courses against Caesarea. So Caesarea was wondering, hey, 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 hey. what is happening? Ah, the amount of wood they have and the victory is too much now. They're wondering they have 40, but the impact is like 4,000. Because you are basing us based on human strength. But we also have apostolic and angelic power behind us. Didn't you read what happened when Joseph went to war? The Bible says, Joseph went to war. The Bible says, as Moses raised up the, the rod of God, he said, Israel prevailed. Hey, Makabaya. La paya, ya, 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 ya. Let me teach you how to do this. You want to learn how to do it? Before you go for the interview, raise up the rod. Before you go for the interview, raise up the rod. Before you set a mission, raise up the rod. Call your wife. Join the hands together. Only let's pray. You wake up at nine. Shabalada, lekitobra, shapa, kapa, shile, kapata, lapoko, sheleba. Everybody thinks you're stupid, but you're raising up the rod. All of a sudden, they'll be fighting for you from the spiritual. Somebody shout, Amen. Someone say, How did you know that? 
because we're spirit dependent people we don't fight like that <laughs> we may look we may look delicate like you know you know you know we're gentle <laughs> you know easy <laughs> Is a phone speaking <laughs> London train but back from New Jersey. <laughs> but when we get to the spirit room, Poco Poco Shaka Paco Lomba, Shaba Lava Roba, Rebocome, Shebele Gedege, Rebebe Meme Momota, Bante Keshka, Menene Marua, Presto, Scabara, Pasto Lamata. That's how we roll. See, don't be deceived with this kind of suit. The power is not in the shirt and tie. The power is in the secret place. La Pashata Lava Daba Yagada. Hey, Bible says, as soon as Zion traveled, she came back. Somebody shout Amen. Secret place is not place for makeup. Secret place is not place for grammar. Listen to me. Secret place is the language of power. Balunde ke suse prato. Raga gaga tampo shagadwa. Si letronde casco paradia. Enis tifra scoba prate sulemandai. What are you doing? We're settling in the spirit. The problem is this. You think the same way you wrap your friends. You can wrap spiritual things. No. Spirit word response authority. Oh, glory to God. Hey, Kabbalah, that was Shanda Haya. Praise God. Stand, let's pray. Are there some things you want to deal with the secret? Go ahead and pray. Balamata Kabasha, don't let the Kote Lavaya. Silakata the Brokata. Prende Chile, prende Chile, prende Rebe me monte, Chile que brata, e rishute le cosca brata ya, e ni cristone, Chile ratunte, brato, scabra, sapo, raba, rete, mendo, calito, scapena, rabana, satolia, satolia, e shune kaya, pando lobo, shele mendi, silaiko, mendra, saitova. Aha, 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 hey! Rebel, rebel, Deal with those issues in prayer. Echo de Maratona. Epane Shetone. O Senebradaya. Eriki Tushe Balabai. Daga, 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 Aha, aha, it should be bato mana, baby baby for boy, ayosha, eko shate, lino suze, suze ni matwa, amina, solande, redu de, prasto, 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 saprato, prasto, prasto, saprate, prasto, prasto, prato ne katwa. Man, can I agree with you? I agree with you today that whatever you bind is bound. Whatever you lose is loose. I declare over you that from heaven, the angels of God take your matter and begin to wrestle on your behalf and they obtain for you victory. This year is victory for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, no man will be able to stand before you in the name of Jesus Christ. They say you will do exploit. Shout, I receive it. Oh, glory to God. Shalom, Andy. Lift up your hands and thank Him. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise God.